Red Polo Nation, welcome to Kubota training. Why do we have a Kubota? The Kubota is a privilege and not a right for the Red Polo Nation. It really helps us out when transporting a lot of e sport club equipment out to University Bay Fields. It also helps with the setup and collection of equipment at Near West for our flag football programs. This is an expensive piece of equipment, and there's a reason why we are going through some of the trainings and such to make sure that everyone is well versed on all the safety features and what have you. The emergency brake when not in use should always be pulled up into the hold position. The picture on the far left of the screen shows the emergency brake all the way up at its highest position. When looking to remove the emergency brake, it is important that you push the button at the top of the lever and you hold that down and push the entire lever down to the bottom position. Please make sure that this is pushed all the way down as a lever that is stuck halfway in between, like the picture in the middle. It will still have a brake that is applied. You are able to drive the machine but you can't go faster than 10 miles per hour and you will ruin the brakes. So please make sure that the lever is pushed all the way down. Dash controls. Our first arrow on the screen shows the emergency flashers. If at any point we need to pull over or um, an accident has occurred, what have you, flipping the red button to the I position will turn the emergency flashers on. If you are traveling on the road at a very, very slow speed, I would throw on your emergency hazard lights. Our next arrow pushing, uh, showing us on the dash controls is the location of the horn, the lights, and your turn signals. We will touch on turn signals later on in the presentation today, but please make sure that your lights are on. In the setting that it currently is, your lights are on for all travel. The key is always left in the Kubota. We would like you to pull out the key halfway when parking it overnight in the garage or when it's not in use. The next arrow has just showed us four wheel drive and two wheel drive. We will always drive the Kubota in two wheel drive. If we ever have to put the Kubota into four wheel drive, there's a good chance that you've been stuck into a place that you shouldn't have been in in the first place. So we will always travel in two-wheel drive. The next arrow points to where our gears are. Right now, currently, the shifter is set into the neutral position. R is for reverse. That is the red R that is located in the center of the screen. L, M, H, and N are your other ones. When traveling on the road, we would like to have the shifter set into H or high speed. Anytime we are traveling on grass and going slower than 20 miles per hour, we would like you to have the shifter set in M, medium speed. A couple more dash controls for you to look at. The first arrow points to your speedometer. These Kubotas do have a governor that is set onto them. They cannot go faster than 25 miles per hour. And that is the posted speed limit on all the roads located on the university. So a drive all the way out to Ubay is 25 miles per hour, except if you're cutting through the lot 60 parking lot. The speed limit for that is 10 miles per hour. Please make sure you obey all posted speed signs. Next, when you have the key all the way in the ignition and you turn it to the first setting, these lights should pop up. The exclamation point tells you when the emergency brake is still applied. That is a warning to make sure that you go and remove that brake. The next arrow points to your left and right turn signals. Uh, remember the slide beforehand 
on the dash where you can move that yellow lever to the left or to the right. On this part of the Kubota, you will see a blinking, flashing arrow that tells you which way you are turning. And then finally, um, our fuel gauge lets us know how much fuel. Anytime we are below half, please put it in your daily report and we will make sure that our maintenance staff fills it up the next day. It is important that you never fill up the Kubota with gas as it uses diesel and only the maintenance guys have access to diesel. And for your convenience, a handy dandy cup holder. Now it's time to start the Kubota. With the ignition, with the key in the ignition, what we need you to do, because it is a diesel vehicle, we need you to warm up the glow plugs. The arrow points to the third setting where the glow plugs are. Once you turn the key to the third setting, we need you to hold it there for five to ten seconds. On the right hand side of the dash, you will see where that second arrow has popped up, an orange glow plug sign. It's important that, that is on and you hold it for 5 to 10 seconds to warm up the glow plugs. You might have to hold it for a little bit longer if it's on a cold, cold night. It takes a while for these things to heat up. The last picture on the right shows the shifter in the reverse position. The Kubota will not start unless it is in neutral, so it is important to shift out of gear. In reverse, it gets stuck often, so it's important that you turn the wheel to release the shifter. When it comes to turning, you must move the yellow dial to the direction that you are turning. So the picture on the left hand side of your screen, that dial, you are going to turn left. That is what you are signaling to all pedestrians and other vehicles. The picture on the right means you are signaling to the right. Notice the orange or reddish dot in the center, that is your horn, and the black lever will adjust your lights for you. We always want to drive with our lights on. Additional tips and tricks. This isn't NASCAR people. Please make sure that the Red Polo Nation drives with care. One of the things that always surprises us, you know, if it's our first time back on the Kubota or our first time driving it, is that when we let off the gas, it will actually slow or stop the Kubota. So, you can still use your brakes, but realize that if it's going at full speed and you let yourself off the gas, you will come to a quick stop. It will be herky and jerky. When in reverse, a safety beeper will sound. That is a new addition to the Kubota this year, so don't be alarmed by that. If it is not working in reverse, please make sure you make note of that in your daily reports. Like mentioned before, never put fuel into the Kubota. It uses diesel fuel and only the maintenance guys can fill that up. We never want to transport injured participants in the Kubota. Only rec sports employees are allowed in the vehicle. As always, please obey all posted signs, especially the speed limit signs when traveling on the roads. Obey all stop signs, come to complete stops, and use the yields when you move through roundabouts. When driving on the play fields, please make sure we drive around all of our play fields and not through them. It's important we don't want to see tire tracks and make ruts when driving through our flag football fields or our sport club fields where our participants participate play. Also, make sure that when loading equipment into the back of the Kubota that you are safe and everything is stored securely. Two trips is better than an accident. That's what I always like to say. Please make sure that you complete the quiz on Learn at UW. This must be completed by Monday, September 15th at 11.55 p.m. And it has not been mentioned before in the PowerPoint. Please, 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 please. please. Always wear your seatbelt when traveling inside of the Kubota. If you have any additional questions or comments regarding this presentation, please direct them to Chad. Thank you and drive safely.